Hello there, my name is Ismaus and today let's talk about how I created this artwork. If you want to see the reference image, you can check out the description or go to my Discord server and find the link there. Without further ado, let's just get in and uh, get started. So the first thing I did was to match my camera to the reference image camera by going into output settings and changing the aspect ratio of my camera. Then I added a plane. We're going to use this to create the center triangle. With the plane added, we can use the mirror modifier to create the other faces of the triangle. If you add an empty, you can use that empty as the mirror object to angle the mirror into a triangle. Now we just need to add another mirror modifier with no mirror object and we should get our triangle. Okay, now we're just adding a few subdivisions and uh, these subdivisions are also being added to the other faces of the triangle since we are using the same uh, plane for that. I'm also adding some lighting here just so I can get a feel of how my scene is going to look. Now you can see I'm trying to experiment with these friend modifiers to see how this would look. So I added the uh, bevel modifier, which made things look better, but uh, it was also slowing down uh, the setup because of the number of polygons we are going to use. So you can see here, I just used the random select uh, option to select random faces on our mesh by going under the select menu up on the uh, there to select uh, to select random faces. You can also invert the selection by using random deselect uh, from the drop down menu there uh, to select the inverse of whatever you have. So yeah, I also just wanted to add in a few extra details and uh, yeah, so you just have to pull uh, different faces to get a, to get an interesting uh, look or we can start working on some materials. So uh, for the textures, I just used something simple because I knew that uh, the textures were not going to be too much visible since uh, the lighting was going to overpower it and uh, we're also going to make uh, the, text the surface of this triangle look a bit darker. So I wasn't worried too much about deta the details in the texture. Here you, I'm just experimenting with just randomizing the roughness of the surface by using uh, UV coordinate mapping just to get uh, different faces uh, ha to have different uh, roughness values. I end up not using this uh, in the in the final version, I think, but I, I wanted to leave it in here so that you can see the different ways you can get some bit of variation in uh, your scene. So now let's create that beam, that triangular beam, uh, lighting beam you see in the middle. So for most of this, I used uh, textures, procedure textures to create this. I wanted to up, just apply this on uh, on a plane. I made instances of that plane and uh, turn, created a triangle, a triangular shape on that. So I'm also, these duplicates are instance duplicates of this object that I'm creating. So as I'm working on this, you can see uh, the changes happening on the triangle there. So the first thing I added was to add some noise and then a gradient map uh, so that I can create an alpha map where the edges are transparent. As uh, the beam goes further to the edges of the mesh, uh, we get a transparent, uh, they become, the edges become more transparent to get that kind of yeah, beam effect. Uh, just a gradient with this kind of uh, ramp uh, design uh, where you have dark uh, nodes on the opposite ends of the ramp. Uh, I'm also adding uh, some noise just to break up uh, that uh, gradient so that it's not just a straight beam, just to have some detail in there. And uh, I'm, mixing, I'm mixing that, so I'm just adding color here just to see how things are going to look. And I'm also trying to play around with different noises, mixing uh, different noises so that we have larger details and uh, small details. So. Uh, I also wanted to have that fire lit to make it look like fire. So you can see that uh, I'm subtracting uh, the the non-stretched noise uh, from the stretched noise uh, to get that kind of beam. Uh, if you slow down the, the playback, you can see what I'm doing here. It's just subtracting one. Uh, I think I'm subtracting from the gradient map. So. go back you can see the different nodes I'm here I'm using here then they're, they're very simple and uh, to scale that noise in the Z axis you just have to add texture coordinate mapping and uh, use the X axis and straight the uh, Z location so uh, here I'm just colorizing uh, that uh, to get that glowing effect uh, by playing around with different uh, nodes especially the mix RGB and uh, so I decided to use the color ramp and I uh, just color that colorize that um, since it gives you more uh, inputs uh, that you can use. You can see um, each node I'm using there, I'm just 
I'm adding, I'm giving it a different color to, uh, to kind of create that fiery effect. And uh, because of the triangle shape we created, you can see they form that triangle. And uh, this is also easily animatable. You just have to play around with those values, especially the uh, vector transform rotation for the noise, and uh, you'll have that fiery effect. Yeah, so again, it's just about blending different effects or blending different nodes uh, to get the results you want. So I'm just mixing and uh, blending again as we go. Uh, by the way, uh, I guess this is the right time to announce that uh, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about creating podcasts uh, that, are, that will be available on different pro platforms. Um, uh, so if you're interested in learning how to use Blender for making money, uh, just maybe just to make uh, extra cash with Blender, like what I do, especially with uh, selling uh, 3D models. So what I'm doing here is just... Uh, I changed the texture coordinate mapping to UV mapping so that I can easily um, control uh, the size of uh, the uh, these beams. Uh, since with generated texture coordinate mapping, you can't really just scale the mesh uh, to get the size you want. So uh, just to have better control, I changed the texture coordinate mapping to uh, UV mapping uh, so that I can just scale down the UVs and uh, get the shape or control the size of the, the mesh. Uh, that way, without going into the nodes uh, to, to do that. So, as I was saying, uh, I'm, th I'm thinking about of starting a podcast, and uh, I'll be using a platform called Anchor.fm. So, I'll be leaving a link uh, after I make my first episode. Uh, if you are interested in, uh, uh, yeah, learning how to make my, it's, it's mostly going to be about uh, using Blender to earn some bit of a living, maybe just getting some extra cash. And so, and maybe. Uh, starting a youtube channel and growing it if you want to do that so yeah basically i'm just uh trying to fix a few, few issues make things look better i'm not doing anything new here that's why i'm not to, fo to focus on explaining that uh, so i just wanted i wanted to round off the corners of uh the faces at uh, the corners of the uh the triangle there so i tried to use the spin tool uh, to yeah, to round the round that off uh, but uh, it was causing a few issues i ended up not uh, using them and i think they looked fine without uh, using our rounded corners yes so i don't want to skip ahead uh, because i think a lot of people might want to see this part as well uh, so that's why i'm not trying to skip ahead but i you can I can use without going into the nodes. I can easily scale uh, the noise or that beam uh, to however to any scale I want uh, quite easily. So you can see me now here. Just try. You can see how easily I would have rounded them off, rounded the corners off. But I didn't think it wasn't looking nice. So I just decided to go with that hard edge, hard angle triangle like that instead of a rounded angle triangle and uh, so now i started applying the mirror modifier uh, so that i can easily uh, move things around maybe create a few duplicates of these triangles i ended up not using the duplicated triangles uh, so i decided to go with a different co concept because i use these reference images as reference images to drive my inspiration but not to copy exactly what i'm seeing um just to experiment with the power of blender so i decided to go with this concept just having a light triangle and i using the array system to kind of make it into an infinite uh, that and i think I, it came out nice i tried to also add more triangles and i thought uh, just having one center triangle and uh, adding some bit of animation would make things look even look interesting i uh, just by doing that so i removed the extra triangles and uh yeah now i just started playing uh with animation so as i was doing this i decided i, I got an idea of adding sparks uh, so this beams as because the center beam is not rotating but uh, the triangle uh, the small triangle is rotating so when that beam touches uh that triangle i thought of maybe if i added sparks that it would make uh, things look interesting so uh, this is what i'm doing right now i added a plane 
and uh, added uh, particle system. Now for the particles, unfortunately, if it doesn't render a motion blur, so you can't just add spheres and then add motion blur for the particles to look like uh, uh, sparks. So instead I chose to just create a plane, uh, shrink it into one single uh, spark, I give it an emissive material and use that as uh, the render object for the particle system. Uh, then what I did is played around with the random rotation for the uh, for the for the sparks, uh, give them a bit of color, just playing around with different settings. And uh, if you slow down this a bit, uh, you can see the the things I was doing here. They are not that complicated. So I wanted the particles to fade out as uh, they die. So what I did is I used a gradient, a position gradient. Uh, to kind of get the position of the particles as they as they go away from the apparent. So then I used a car ramp to uh, convert that into an alpha map and yeah, use that as the alpha map. And I also used that mask or that map just to add some color variation as the particles uh, fade away from the original, yeah, from the source. Now what was left was just to animate these sparks when uh, the beam connects with the uh, with the surface. And uh, unfortunately, there is no way to stop particles from being emitted. Uh, it's just they emitted until the end of the frame. So you only have two options, start and end frame. Uh, there's no way for you to control when particles, uh, they, you don't have a way to stop particles from emitting and then pausing and then emitting and then pausing. So what I did is, just animate the scale value of the particles. Uh, so what, if I want them to not show anymore, I scale them to zero uh, so they disappear in the scene. They're still there, but their scale is too small uh, to be picked up uh, by your eyes or by the computer. So and then I scale them back when I want them to, to, to come on. So we start when they're off, uh, then on when the, the beam connects, and then off when it doesn't connect anymore, as you can see. deciding to animate some of the settings for the beam so that we have it animated and uh, that's that's I think uh, the hard parts of this here uh, this process everything else is just repeating these steps and uh, cleaning up a few things here and there so So I duplicated these particles uh, to other corners of the triangle. Uh, so when they also have contact with the surface, uh, they can also start emitting uh, those particles at the same time as well. So you can see that. And uh, I made sure that whenever I duplicated the, the particle emitter, I also made sure that uh, I, gave, I made its particle settings independent uh, so that the, the two particle systems don't share the same. Uh, particle settings uh, because if you, if they share the same particle settings uh, then when you change one uh, the other will also change and uh, here I'm just playing around with the lighting so
So I'm just going to let the time lapse continue uh, because I think most of the hard parts are have been explained. Yeah, thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, the time lapse is still going for a few, maybe two more minutes, but uh, I think it's just cleaning, cleaning up and uh, yeah, thank you. Again, uh, if you want to watch the podcast, um, I'm, I'm yet to produce the first episode, so, first episode but uh, when i do i will be updating you and uh, leaving links everywhere uh, so that you can access that if you are interested in listening to that uh, i'll also make sure that the podcasts are available to my patrons if they want to listen to them there but uh, i'm not think i don't think i'll be having them i will have them on youtube because uh, i don't think they will work well on youtube so yeah see you then